Welcome to Harvest International Ministry. I hope you came here prepared because we're not going to have a doozy today. We're moving on from doozies. We're going to have something that uplifts us to where we don't feel that we have any other choice but to be able to move to what God is telling us. So today we're going to be dealing with igniting worship from within. They told me that there is a condition where someone can start a fire within them, their own self and be consumed by the fire. There have been instances where people have burned to death to where you can hardly find any remains. But there was no outside fire. It is believed that they were consumed from a fire from within. Now I would think if we can be on fire naturally from within and it would kill us, then we should spiritually be on fire and kill certain things in us. <laughs> See, everything in us is not good. There's some things in us that need to go. But if we can ignite that thing that can eat it up. I, I was told, you know, there's not cure for certain diseases. And then they've gone to some hospitals. And there's a hospital in California where the first thing they do is put them on a fast. They stop them from eating altogether. And you, they ask, well, why do you put them on a fast? It says, because some things only come out with fasting and prayer. So the first thing is they cut out food altogether. And then they bring food that is healthy for the person. And the person ends up eating themselves to health. So today, we're going to eat ourselves to health. Power in worship. Father, I thank you for this opportunity that we have together. I thank you that you're a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Lord God, wherever I am supposed to go, all I have to do is follow hard after you. Father, let us be able to come into worship like we've never been able to worship before. Lord, to be able to seek your presence. Lord God, to understand what it is to run as a deer. And after all, doing all the running, all the deer wants is for some water. Lord God, you are the water to quench our thirst. Lord, we want to arrive to that place. Help us all get there. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Psalms 95, 6. And it says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Over and over in the Bible, especially the Psalms, some, some of you, if you don't know, the Psalms is, was written by David. And David is considered not only to be a king, but to be a psalmist. He would write songs and give it to musicians, and the musicians would write music to it. And they had some musical uh, phrases on it, like Salah. And it sounds all cute, Salah. You know what it means? We don't know what it means. We lost that translation. We don't know what Salah really means. We all know that it's a musical term. He would write music. And he was always into worship. He was always wanting to be in the presence of God. There was nothing that he preferred more than being with God. And he said, come, let us worship. Bow down. You know, we bow down all the time. Bow down all the time. We bow down to all the crazy stuff. Yeah, have you watched on Netflix and the Hulu Plus and um, Prime, the stuff they have on there? We get addicted to that stuff. And then we bench watch it one after the other. And we're feeding something. We're bowing ourselves to something that's not necessarily good. The more that we get it, the more that we see it, the more that is in us. And the word of God said what's in you is what's going to come out of you. If you're depositing the wrong things, why are you expecting to get something else out? We need to start putting the right deposits. We need to start putting things that are good for us. You know, allow our eye gate to see things that are good. Allow our ear gate 
to hear things that are good. The other day I was putting on gas in my car and someone pulled up next to me and they turned their music on. I didn't hear them when they pulled up. When they left the car, they decided to put some, the music up. And every other word of that music was a curse word. And I looked at the, uh, the car next to me and I saw the little kids in the back seat. And I thought as an educator for just a moment, what kind of language are those little kids going to have when they get to kindergarten? What kind of language are they going to have in first grade and second grade? Because right now, they're hearing every curse word, and to them, a curse word ends up being a normal word. We had one of our young men that, it, when he was growing up, his mom is deaf, so his first language was sign language. And I always thought, man, that's so neat that you know sign language. He didn't know sign language. He knew language. That was in him. So while other people have to study how to sign, he doesn't have to study at all. He never opened up one single book that says American Sign Language. He just has seen it all his life. And that sign language is in him. So if you get around him and you start to sign without meaning to, he starts to look and understand what you're signing. I remember I was signing next to somebody one time, the only song I know, love in any language. And I ended up, I ended up doing love wrong. I did it in an angle. And in an angle, it didn't mean love. It was a curse word. I didn't know that. He looked at me and he says, you know you just cursed at me. I said, love in any, no, you did love si it's sideways. That means something else. See, those that sign, they're smiling at me because they know what I said. And it was a really bad curse word. I'm really, really bad. I didn't know. I don't know how to sign. I just know how to do one song. And I messed that one up. So for those that that is in them, that's what comes out. So we want to put worship in you. We want to put praise in you. So we can't deposit this on a Saturday. It doesn't work that way. You know, you can do a one-week deposit at the bank. You can. But do you want to do a, a one-week deposit from just one day of working? That's going to be one sorry deposit. Oh, amen. You understand one day of working is not the same thing as five days of working. If you're going to do a deposit, how about you do a deposit of things you have been doing over and over and over and over? That means I worship at home. See, and we have the facility to do it now. It's easy for us to do it. See, I have this thing in my room. It's called Alexa. Alexa doesn't always get it right, and she's nosy too. She'll interrupt me in the middle of something, and, but I found out that I can get on my phone to Spotify and Spotify make Alexa get it right. And I made a list of my song on, well, I didn't do it, my wife did. I don't want to take credit for something she did. She knows the song I like. And whenever I hear a song, I'm like, can you add that to my list? So all I have to do is go home and just get on my phone and just hit play. And then Alexa fills the house. Well, what are we doing? I am filling myself. So when I come here on uh, Saturday, I'm already full, but all I want to do is empty out. And I want to empty out so I can be refilled again. You know, we understand. We like the new stuff. I will give me some new infilling. But we have to do the effort. We have to come in with an attitude of praise. We have to come in with an attitude of worship. And we have to know that the Bible tells us that that's how we should do it. You should come in here ready. See, there's a lot of things that we're finding out in science. We found out what the Bible says. The Bible says that laughter is as good as medicine. That's in the Bible. There was a person that they gave him three months to live. He had cancer. They said in three months, you're going to die. Get your life in order. You're going to die. So what he did, this is in the blockbuster days. Some of you have no idea what that is. It's okay. Just go with it. 
So he went to Blockbuster Videos and he rented every comedy that he can find. And he said, well, if I'm going to die, I'm not going to sit around and I'm going to be all sad. So for three months, he did nothing but watch comedies and laughed. He laughed and laughed. And three months came and he went to the doctor and he's like, doctor, I'm supposed to be dead. What's going on? What's going on? Come on, doctor. You know, I haven't been home all sad. I've been laughing, my, you know, uh, but you said three months. And the doctor does and does all these checks, whole panel of tests. He says, I don't see cancer. What did you do? He said, I laughed. What do you mean you laughed? I just rented movies and I watched movies and I, I lived at home. I didn't even go to work because, hey, I was going to die in three months. I might as well enjoy the three months I had left. And all I did was laugh. And after three months of laughing, there was no sign of cancer. See, what are you putting inside of you? You are expecting a result, but the result that you're receiving right now is from all the stuff you've already put in. So what I'm asking you to do now is get rid of what you put in and start putting in new things. You know, the Bible has some scriptures that tells you we trade things. He turns my sorrow into dancing. <laughs> he takes my uh, garment of heaviness, and instead, he gives me praise. Come on, we need to trade up, y'all. We need to trade it up. Take whatever you stuff you have right now and say, Lord God, I'm, I'm ready for a trade up. I'm ready. You're going to take my rags and you'll give me something else that's better for this. This is a great trade up. Nobody does this like this. Only God does. Some of us need to start trading up our stuff. You may not be where you're supposed to be. But the only person that's stopping you from being where you should be is you. Because God is for you. The word of God says, if God is for you, who can be against you? There's no one that's stronger than God. So if God is for you, no one can be against you. Even if everybody should be against you, compared to God, there are nobody. So we're going to trade it up. All right. Yet a time is coming and it has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. Let's stop there for a moment. Because here I want you to understand. God is looking and he's searching and he's seeking for worshipers. So when we're having a hard time just coming in to worship and God is looking for people who are worshiping, then he's just going to pass by. Because he's looking for the worshipers. He's looking for the persons who are, I, I don't feel like it. I don't want to. I got a headache. I'm so stressed out. Lord God, I need you. Oh, Lord God. I, oh, I love you. Oh, it doesn't matter what you're feeling like. Because sometimes you feel like a nut. And sometimes you don't. It don't matter how you're feeling. Can you still worship even though you don't feel it? Can you still do what you should do even though you don't want to? You know, that's like being almost pregnant. Just uh, almost pregnant. Is there any such thing as almost pregnant? I'm almost pregnant. What, you're speaking pregnancy into existence? Is that what happened? You're, are you wanting to get pregnant? What, what is this? No, no, I'm almost pregnant. Well, I don't understand. You're pregnant or you're not pregnant. There's not an almost pregnant. There's a, a, I, a, a, I almost yesterday got pregnant or, you know, I'm almost tomorrow going to get pregnant. You know, it's like you're pregnant or you're not pregnant. There's not an in-between there. You can't be almost. And see, we do the same thing when it comes to God. I'm almost this in God. But God is like, oh, you are or you're not. See, when you are almost in God, you're in a place where God says, I'm going to throw you up. He said, I'd rather you be hot. You got it together. All right, hey, you're hot. Or cold. 
you don't have anything together. You're just down there. It's like you only care about yourself and nobody else. God says, I'd rather have those extremes. I'd rather have you hot or I'd rather have you cold. But when you're in the middle, think about it. There's some soup. The soup was nice and hot. It was nice and hot. You forgot that they gave you some nice soup and you went and did a few things and then you came back and realized, ooh, I haven't eaten my soup. It's now at room temperature. But you're really hungry. So what do you do? You take it to the microwave and warm it back up. I tried eating some soup that was lukewarm. I did. I did like three weeks ago. I took one bite. I'll cover the thing back up. Because that's when, you know, the, 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 the grease in there gets a little gelatinous. You know, kind of stuck together a little. And you sit down and you put it in your mouth and you're feeling all this grease. <laughs> and you're like, I can't do this. I just, I just can't. I just can't do this. Okay, this is nasty. That's what God says. It's us. How many times the us have been lukewarm? And then we want to give lukewarm to God. I hope it tastes good. I know it's a little gelatinous, but once you get over that first feeling. <laughs> so God is looking for people who are true worshipers. Well, true worshipers are usually broken people. Ooh. It's hard to be a true worshiper when everything is going good. It's usually people that, Lord God, I need you. I need you. I need you, Lord. I need you. Every hour, I need you. It's usually people who are going through something. Lord God, I just... I just, if you're not with me, then I have nobody. It's hard to have everything together and really worship. See, the word of God says that in our weakness, his strength is perfected. God allows us to go to those moments. Have you ever noticed that the best love songs are brokenness? I was watching a video yesterday. I don't know what the song looks like. It sounds like because it was just the words. But this girl was going off on some guy. And she was saying stuff like, you know, if you were in a fire, I hope you get burned. You know, if you were, uh, and she went through a lot of scenarios where she was wishing bad for the guy. And I thought to myself, this girl is really mad. Whatever that guy did made her really, really mad. But you know, that song is going to connect with a lot of women who feel that same way about some guy. They're going to hit play and cry and hit play again and cry and hit play one more time and cry and probably hear the song 40 or 50 times because that song connected with their condition. See, God is ready to connect with your condition right where you are. He's ready to connect with you right, right where you are. See, because Jesus came over here and he came to be broken. He, matter of fact, he said it himself. He says, I take this bread and I break it. It represents my body. <laughs> he understands the being broken. So that if you are broken, you are perfect for being a true worshiper. You are perfect for it. I remember when uh, Ariel was born and Elijah looked at Ariel and he didn't understand the difference between a boy and a girl. And he went to his mom and says, Ariel Bolkin. <laughs> <laughs> to him, she was broken. Of course, we all knew she was a girl. And we looked at him and said, yes, yeah, she's broken. We weren't going to explain that. So God is looking for those true worshipers. So if God is actively looking for true worshipers, why is it that it's so hard for us to truly worship? Could it be that the enemy doesn't want you to understand 
that God is looking for those who worship. God is a spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. That means that if you are broken in the inside and you start to worship, ooh, anyone that's spirit-filled will understand that you are really worshiping. Because you sense it. It's like, oh, you know, when someone starts to worship, I want to worship. I will worship in a drop of a hat, y'all. I'm, I'm a worshiper. I would. I will worship in a drop of a hat. You get someone and start worshiping, I'm, I'm going to instantaneously, I want to worship with you. Because I understand that when you begin to worship, the presence of God comes in. And I want to be where he is. Amen. I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. So when you don't feel like it, your body don't belong to you. No way. He bought it. It was very expensive. We're offering our bodies as a living sacrifice. That means that, you know, when you're uh, going to certain type of churches, uh, this is how they worship. But if God said, I need you to run around the church. And you sit there and say, I bind that in the name of Jesus. Not running around no church. First of all, you can't bind God. He's unbindable. <laughs> you can bind the enemy, but you can't bind God. If God is telling you to run around the church, let's stop for a moment. Will the enemy tell you to run around the church? Would your neighbor tell you to run around your ch the church? Oh, wait. Would you yourself tell you to run around the church? So we took care of everybody else. So who could be left? This must be what God wants me to do. Somehow or another, my breakthrough is in this running around this church. And I came here for a breakthrough. And I don't care who's going to look at me like if I'm crazy. I'm after my breakthrough. See, you had Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. Jacob was coming back. And Jacob, he had stolen Esau's birthright. And he, at night, he began to just fight. And he was fighting with this person. And he didn't know who the person was. He's going to go meet his brother, that the brother is going to kill him. He's probably thinking, my brother sent an assassin ahead of time so he can destroy me. And my brother don't even have to deal with it. And he started fighting with this man, and he's fighting with his life. And somewhere in that fight, he realized he's no longer fighting with a man, but he's fighting instead with God. And he said to God, I will not let you go until you bless me. And the angel said, release me. I have to go. I will not let you go until you bless me. Do you understand? He's not fighting a man. <laughs> you understand that he's like, I'm going to hold on to you for everything that's in me. Everything that's in me, I'm not letting you go. I'm not letting you go until you speak a word of blessing on me. I'm going to stay right here holding on to you. If I have to hold on to you, if you have to kill me while I'm holding on to you, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. And that angel wasn't playing. The angel touched that thigh, which is the largest muscle in the human body and pulled it out of joint pulled on the thigh could you imagine the pain that he had to endure while not giving up and letting go see some of us we want that instant you know burger king have it your way but sometimes you got to work through Sometimes you got to grab on and says, I'm not letting go. I know what I came here for, and I am not leaving here until I get it. And I don't care how much pain I'm in. If I'm in excruciating pain, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. And the angel says, what's your name? My name is Jacob. You shall be called Jacob no more. For you shall be Israel. 
See, El is the name of God. God gave Jacob his last name. This is all mine. I'm blessing you far beyond what you know I'm blessing. Because I'm giving you my name. He got to see his brother. But when he saw his brother, he had to see him with a limp. Because he had a sign that he fought through his blessing. See, the brother was intending to kill him. That was his whole intention. I'm going to just take him out. Because he's after the promises that I have. He's after my sheep. He's after my goats. He's after my camel. He's after my herds. He's after my workmen. He's coming to get what's mine because he stole my birthright. But I'm going to kill him. See, but Jacob's prayer wasn't just like, bless me. Reunite me with my brother. Let us be at peace with one another. See, the word of God said that when Esau saw his brother, he ran up to him and hugged him. Wait a day ago, you want to kill him. What happened? There was a breakthrough. There was a breakthrough that happened. When we begin to worship God, our purpose of worship is Entirely, I just want to worship you. But there are side effects to worshiping. The side effects are those things that have hung you up, entangled you, entrapped you, have to let you go. Because in worship, you enter into the presence of God. And the word of God says in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy in life forevermore. You can't get into full of the joy and still be sorrowful. There is a change that happens. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord and that should praise the beauty of holiness. And they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endured forever. Now here we are, they're, they're about to go into battle. And here in Chronicles, you're being told, hey, they sent out worshipers first. Why are you sending out worshipers first? It's a war. Buddy, why are you going to sing the singers? The trumpet players? The piano player? The harpist? Why? They're going to get killed. Why are you going to send them first? Oh, I'm glad you asked because we're going to see what happened on the next verse. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord sent ambushes against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. See, what happened is this. They began to praise, and they began to worship God, and God had the enemies kill each other off. What did they do? They worship. Did they fight? No, they didn't fight. Who fought? The other people. The other people fought each other and killed each other out while the singers were just singing. <laughs> See, we kind of miss that when we understand. We come, oh, I don't feel like worshiping. We got, we're doing this song again. You know why we do the same song? So it can get in your spirit. So it can get inside of you. See, you don't have to think of what the words are. You know the words. We have a video of Leilani when she was little. This is before Erica adopted her. She was staying with us. She couldn't speak yet. She was a baby. She was in a little car seat. And I put her next to the piano and I began to sing. And you know what little Leilani who didn't know words did? She started singing with me. She didn't know a word. Couldn't speak a word. She didn't even know how to say dada yet. And she said, <laughs> and she's rocking back and forth in that little car seat thing and just moving to the music. And it's like, what is she doing? Kids know how to worship. 
we adults lose that because we start having bills. How dare Mr. Bill get more praise than God? He's not bringing you anything. He's only taking away. Why are you sitting here contemplating Mr. Bill? Because I don't know about you. When Mr. Bill comes to my door, I say, Lord God, it's for you. Because he said he'll provide all my needs according to his riches and glory. I'm not concerned about Mr. Bill. Mr. Bill comes all the time. And Mr. Bill knows my name very, very well. And whenever he calls my name, I say, keep my name out your mouth. Get, hey, it's Jesus. When we come to church, we're supposed to be focusing on worshiping God. All the other stuff, it'll still be there. It'll, whatever, Mr. Bill, you didn't get a chance to pay, it'll still be there. And after you worship, hopefully there's an answer to that. Uh, I've had some heavily bills paid. Yeah, I sure have. I remember when we were buying this building, and I told the banker, yes, we'll have the money. Yes, we'll have it. We will have 25% of the down payment when it's time to give the down payment. And I remember I looked under my bank account, and I was in the single digits. But I know this. My God shall supply all my needs according. Now wait, that's another musical term. So where we get our word accordion from. What is it, that term? According, it's having a chord. And the chord, the notes don't sound all the same, but they sound good together. So when I'm asking for God to do, give me something or do something, and he gives it to me according, he's not giving it to me like how he gave it to Donna, or how he gave it to me uh, with Erica, or how he gave it to me with Edward. He's not giving it to me like that. He's going to give it to me different. But it's going to be exactly what I need. It's going to be exactly what I need. See, as a musician, I can tell you there are chords that are called tension chords. See, if God can give me according to how he wills, there might be some tension in between there. But I know something about tension chords. They always resolve. Oh, my goodness. I'm teaching music now. If you're on camera, please follow me. I'm going to play a tension chord. It's not going to sound like a tension chord to you. This is a tension chord. It don't sound like a tension chord, does it? Until I isolate the sounds that have tension, like. You can hear the tension? But if I add other notes to the tension, it makes it pretty. Another tension. Now, did you hear the tension of res resolution? It resolved. See, God allows tension to come into your life. But if you trust in God, he'll also resolve it. Because he's doing according to. There are different sounds that are coming together. But the sounds are making your life. You're supposed to be his perfect symphony. Allow him to make you his symphony. And as a symphony, you have to have every tone. Ooh, I hope that blessed somebody because I didn't even add that to my notes. <laughs> make a joyful noise to the Lord. Wait, we forget to do that. 
We come in, oh, I've had such a tough week. I had a bad week this week. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. I need you to pray for me because who are you giving worship right now? You're not giving God worship with that. See, this is giving God worship. You know what? It hasn't been a great week. But this is going to change right now because I'm going to come and worship. I, I'm going to come and worship. All my week is just going to wash off of me because, hey, hey I, need a, I need a spiritual bath right now. I got all dirty this week, and now we're going to start all back over, and I want that water to be nice and hot because I don't like cold water. <laughs> you going to wash this mess off of me? You're going to cow gun me away. That's not even a commercial anymore, is it? Oh, man, I'm telling my age. <laughs> Make a joyful noise. What kind of noise? Joyful. What kind? Wait a second. It didn't say to make uh, joyful music. Because not everybody knows how to sing. Some people are so out of tune that God loves them. <laughs> They start singing, and it's like, oh, my goodness, Lord. God. And I used to be one of those that I was in underneath my breath. I'm like, can you please be quiet? <laughs> the song was better without you. And then I went to a church, and there was this little kid singing. And the kid was so out of tune. Jesus love me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And I found myself crying while he was singing. Because he meant what he was saying. The tones can get in the way. But he meant what he was saying. And see, God said, this is why I want you to make a joyful noise. It doesn't matter if you can sing. It doesn't matter if you can hit the right key. It doesn't matter because I'm looking at your heart. It, what's important is in your heart. Make it a joyful. I'm not asking you to be paparazzi. I'm not asking you to be Whitney Houston. I'm not asking you to be a, a, any of these people that we elevate their singing. I'm asking you to be a genuine you. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All ye lands, everybody. Everybody's from some land. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. How do we come here with singing? How do we come here with singing? Have you seen people don't come to church with singing? You know what people come to church with? All the other stuff. They come in here, can you please pray all these cobwebs off my life? No, I don't want to pray for cobwebs. Can we kill the spider? Let's deal with the real issues. The real issues go a little deeper. I need to come in and knowing, hey, you know what? I'm coming to see God. I'm going to dress to see God. I'm coming to see God. You know, if you had to go see the President of the United States, you're not going to come dressed in just any kind of way. You know you're going to come dressed for the President of the United States. And you're going to dress accordingly. And if it's a black tie event, you're not going to go to Amazon and order a $99 tie, uh, bow, um, uh, tuxedo. You're not going to do that. You're going to go and actually rent a real expensive one. Why? You're going to go see the president. They're going to know that's a $99 tuxedo if they see you. So you got to go get the authentic stuff. Did you hear the word I said? Authentic. When you're coming to see God, he wants some authenticity. Be the real thing. Be the real thing. Some of us are so broken, and we come in here, we act like we have it all together. God wants you to use your brokenness. When I was little, I read this book that God uses broken pots. Just bless my heart. Because that's what God uses. God doesn't use people that get their stuff all together. God uses people who have stuff all torn up. Recently, I was listening to T.D. Jake's wife, and she said, you know, I never saw a, a bathroom until I was eight years old. All my life, I've gone to the outhouse. All her life, she'd only seen the latrines. 
and now she lives in a mansion. God don't want her to forget the outhouse experience. That's her authentic self. Don't forget the stuff that other people look down on. Those things God's going to use. To your authentic self. <laughs> we're going to come with gladness. We're going to get here and we're going to already start singing. See, on my way coming here to church, we started singing. We didn't even mean to. You know, Spotify just put one of these songs that I really like. An oldie but a goodie. And Lizzie and I just started singing. My wife tends not to sing around me because she doesn't feel really confident with her singing. But when it's time to, to praise and worship, oh, she, she act crazy over here in this corner. You know, I, I hear her just screaming out, and I'm like, it's a noise, honey. Go ahead. Go ahead. Make that noise. Make that, make that noise good. Make some good noise over there. <laughs> Well, you know, I, I married her when she was eight years, uh, 18 years old. Eight years old. Goodness gracious, honey. We started 10 years earlier. Uh, where she, I married her when she was 18 years old. And she married the church uh, music minister. You can understand her approbation to try to not sing around me. And be not conformed to this world. But be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, the world will tell you things while you're at church. Don't do that. That's embarrassing. What would your people say if they were to see you right now? Now, you know if you start acting like this, they're going to expect for you to act like this every Sunday. Don't you raise your hand. You know you're not good at keeping your word. <laughs> see, while we're here, we start talking to ourselves. And we stop ourselves from moving. All right. When you're not moving, you're standing still. You came here to move. And then you talk yourself into standing still. Isn't that what happens? We came to church. I, hey, I'm going to start back over again. I, I, I need God. I need God in my life. I'm gonna, I want to be moving with God. I want to go where God is. And then we talk ourselves into sit down and don't move. Well, we need to start hearing a different voice. That spirit inside of us. The Bible tells us that he, he will renew that, that connection with us. He will make that, that spirit in us alive again. We start to hear what he's asking us to do. Let's continue. I'm going to be transformed by making my mind new. Re is a prefix which means to do again. So I'm making my mind new again. Well, how often do I have to make my mind new? It becomes almost at the moment thing. Almost every moment, I was like, you better cut that out. Like, mm -hmm, stop acting so crazy. You know we're believing in God for this. Wait, am I the only one that talks to myself? I told Donna, I said, because sometimes Donna will start talking to herself, and so I wrote a, a t-shirt for her. And the teacher said, if you see me talking to myself, we're having a conference. Don't interrupt. Now, see, I talk to myself inside my head. Some people talk to themselves outside their head, which is okay. We find out she's not crazy. It's okay for Donna. Some of us need to start talking to ourselves a little louder. A little louder, start talking to yourself. Wait, a, I came here for a breakthrough. You better be quiet. I'm here for my breakthrough. If God is saying to run around the church, I'm going to run around the church. You're just going to have to deal with it. And they're like, what are you doing? Oh, I'm fuss fussing at myself. What are you fussing at yourself? My old self want to keep rising up. But my old self is crucified with Christ. But yet I live. Not I, but Christ that lives within me. See, that old self want to get back up again. My, oh, I got to remind that old self, oh, you've been crucified. Been crucified. I hate. I, I live, but not me living. I don't live anymore. I was crucified. 
It is Christ that's living in me. So what is Christ telling you to do? Because if you're doing the same thing you always did, I'm sorry, honey, that crucifixion didn't work. Because you have to be changed. So we renew our mind. We make our mind new. As often as we need to make our mind new. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There are three phases here. So we're going to break down those three phases. All right. Because some of us are in a different phase. And it's okay as long as you're in a phase. It's not okay when you're not in a phase. So the first phase is it's good. See, God made us and God made us good. Everyone in here, one ear is higher than the other ear. Everyone in here, one eye, one eyeball is bigger than the other uh, eyeball. One eyeball is higher than the other one. Everyone in here, if you had to look the dimensions of your face, even you don't even have to look at your face. You can look at your hands and you can tell, okay, they look like they're hands of the same person, but they're not identical. They're different. They're close enough to be the same person. This is what God calls good. So you should be existing in good. That should be your very first place. I, I look presentable. No one is sitting here with a measuring tape trying to measure if one ear is higher than the other. You know, they've done a test and they've made pictures of perfect people and presenting those pictures to babies. And the babies cried every time they saw those pictures because our eyes are not used to perfection. Our eyes are used to good. So our very first step, Lord God, I want to be good. See, all of you, I want to be perfect. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. And if we don't get there in this life, we're going to automatically come into it in the next one. So right now we're good. And the next one is acceptable. See, good is I'm good with y'all. You know, we're, hey, we're in this together. We're Christians. We're, well, we're good. And God says, now my next phase is when I accept you. See, this is when Jesus was being baptized. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit came down. And the Holy Spirit came down upon Jesus. And then you heard the voice of God. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. Wait a second. Wasn't he the son already? Yes, he was the son all along. God always knew that that was the son. It wasn't saying that the relationship was less. All, when it's acceptable is when you hear God saying, I have picked this one. Listen to him. That's the acceptable one. See, in everyone in here, if you gave your life to Christ, you want to be a ministry to somebody. I want to be able to minister to someone. I want to be able to win someone to Christ. And when you get that is when all of a sudden you got to that acceptable phase. You got to acceptable phase and what you have in the inside you can't keep to yourself. You have to share it with others. You're bound to, I need to tell you about this. See, we started today and I gave you a testimony of praise and worship. We started at, you know, our listeners that are watching us, they don't know the story. You do. But see, that story impacts me because it's a moment of change in my life. And now you understood something about worship by me sharing you that story. But if I didn't get to a place of acceptable, I could have shared that story and it'd be like, whatever. So I want to get to the next phase. Started with good. Now I'm being proclaimed. I'm acceptable. The last one is, you got it together. Now, perfect for us is not the same thing as perfect for God. Because the Bible says that though the righteous fall 70 times, God will pick them up. See, God is not counting perfection from your moments 
right now, he's counting perfection from your finished. Did you get it? <laughs> he's not counting your moment right now. He's counting your finish. See, God calls you righteous when you weren't righteous. So how are you righteous when you're not righteous? God is not looking at your righteousness right now. He's looking at that he made you righteous. So some of us would get so hard, I messed up. I'm the wrong person if you think I'm going to get on the bandwagon with you and, uh, and be sad with you and be depressed with you. And I'm the wrong person because I will not go there with you. All right, you'll tell me something that is so heavy on your heart, and then I'll treat it trivial. Yeah. What? I'm going to tell you one case. We had one of, one of our ladies. She, uh, she failed out of one class. She failed one class, and she couldn't graduate because of that one class. No graduation. Hey, four years of college, you're not going to graduate because this is one class. And she comes up to me and says, I'm not going to be able to graduate. Why? I failed this one class. Hmm? Okay. How many classes? One. How many? One. Take the one class again <laughs> and pass it. And she walked away like, oh, oh, oh. oh I got to just take the one class. I'm sitting here crying. I have all crocodile tears. And oh, my goodness, he is so right. I just got to take one class. And graduated the next term. I just walked away like nothing. Oh, pfft, one class. Be different if you came in telling me I failed four classes. Then I'm like, we're gonna have to pray you through. <laughs> you failed one class. Well, why was it trivial for me? Because I've had to go through things already. And I've had to go through things that were more than that. And I had to look in myself of when I was good and went through a lot of stuff and think, you're at your good place right now. You only got one. You are so blessed. You're so blessed and highly favored of the Lord that you get to go through one thing. See, I'm not going to go with you when you go and tell me your sad story. Unless you want to sit down and hear my sad story. Because <laughs> I got some. I got some tear jerkers. <laughs> it doesn't mean that I'm callous to what you're going through. If I were to respond like how you, were, you want me to respond, you would give up. So I found that God doesn't respond like that with me either. God respond like, that's all you have. Do you want me to tell you my sad story? Because I said my son, Jesus, and I had to turn my back on him, even though he is who I love. Yeah, Lord God, don't, don't have to tell me no more. Oh, no, I'm not finished. I'm just getting started. Because we've been together from ancient times that's why they call me the ancient of days i can't remember not being with my son and i had to look away and allow him to go through that all by himself lord god that's enough i'm not going through that bad and i get to see it's not that bad what i'm going through it's really not that bad because according to your word everything that i go through it's normal Wait, tell y'all self that for a moment. What I go through is normal. <laughs> God didn't give you any heavenly burdens to carry. He gave you earthly burdens to carry. 
So as I'm going through, I can't conform myself to the things of what the world says to do it. Think about it. How many churches have started who conform to how society is? They may have to rip this scripture out. Because God tells us the opposite. Don't do what everybody else is doing. Well, you know, we're just getting with the times. Really? You know how many times there have been? What if every time we had to change the church so we can be with the times? You know, whatever is good right now, it's not going to be good 10 years from now. I remember when, when the women were getting sex change and they were athletes and the, uh, all the women is like, no problem, we'll take him, yes. And now all those men that had sex change are winning all the bouts and now the women are like, this is not fair. We're competing against men. Wait, how long did that take? That didn't take very long. <laughs> so we can't change with the times. Jesus is not schizophrenic. And neither is God. He says, I am the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's the same God. He's not changing because of us. Do understand that according to God, we are born and we die before he inhales and exhales. Just consider that for a moment. Think about how grand he thinks how we think. Inhale, born. Exhale, die. That's shorter than the mayfly. Mayfly at least lasts 24 hours. <laughs> We're not alone for very long. We're not here for very long at all. But he gave us instructions of what works for us. He gave us instructions. So let's not conform. Don't be like everybody else. Be different. I, I grew up in a holiness church, and a holiness church, you know, they taught women to be ugly. So those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, you had to wear dresses. You couldn't wear makeup, you couldn't wear earrings, you couldn't wear jewelry, you had to cover your head, you couldn't cut your hair, you couldn't shave. I grew up under those conditions. The white stockings, yeah, with the hair sticking out. You know, I grew up under those conditions, and, and I'm not anti people who are still there, okay? I'm not anti people who are still there. But do know this that's not what that scripture meant. It didn't mean don't be ugly or be ugly or be kind of ugly. I mean, no. Me trying to look good does not mean I'm conforming myself to the world. I'm presenting the best me. Then we go to extremes. It is the extremes that gets us in trouble. <laughs> we got to be careful. See, even in the church, you have all these people having all this plastic surgery. I'm trying to be the best me. Really? I don't think that's what God meant. I really didn't think that God meant cut your face and stretch it. I'm just saying, I'm getting off track. I might get some bad emails. <laughs> <laughs> that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and a perfect will of God. So I want to get to perfection. I want to get to perfection. And I would love to get to perfection here. I would. But if the baby cries from a perfect image, how would a person deal with perfection? Just something to think about. You know, what would a perfect music sound like? Would it be pleasing to me? What would perfect art look like? Would I find it palatable? So this is what Jesus said. 
Jesus being perfect, he says, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. See, when we get to this place where God wants us to be, we represent what other people are not. So instead of them looking at the good qualities, they're trying to find every single nuance that you have that might not be so great. Ooh. Oh goodness, I got 16 seconds. There's no way I'm going to do this in 16 seconds. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good work, for not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the days approaching. This verse tells me this. I want to praise God, but sometimes I don't want to praise God. But you know, Donna, when I don't feel like praising God, I need you to help me praise God. I need to go, hey, come on. We're in this together. You know, our worship together is supposed to be better than my worship at home. Come on now, you're holding me back. Let's get on this train together. We're going to worship together. That means you're going to have to get up. Yes, you have to get up. Come on, raise those hands. Come on. You know, we had a one young lady that came in here, and she got filled with the Holy Spirit, and she started speaking in tongues. And, uh, and it was all normal to us, but it was different for her. And how I know it was different for her, because she went home, and she asked her husband, was I speaking in tongues? See, if it was normal for her, she won't have to go home and ask her husband. She asked her husband. Her husband said, yep. You were speaking in tongues. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> See, and then recently her husband got filled with the Holy Spirit and he started speaking in tongues. I'm sure he didn't go home and ask his wife. Well, why? Because she already got filled with the Holy Spirit and she already started speaking in tongues. So therefore, he didn't have to ask her. It was now normal. Some of us need to change what our normal is and get into our new normal. New normal. Hey, miracles is normal. Wait, you've missed it, okay? Because I heard a yes, but I didn't hear any amen, so I'm going to say it again. Miracles are normal because God is a God of miracles. God is not out there talking about, I'm going to try to impress you today. Watch this. He's not trying to do that. It's just normal for God. Think about it. He made everything in six days. And he wasn't sweating. Uh, you know how hard we got to work to get anything done. When God spoke, it happened. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. He wasn't like, ooh, let's bring the light, y'all. Let's go ahead and bring the light. No, he spoke things, and they happened. This is the nature of God. So miracles are normal. So we're supposed to come in. You know, we, we're going to see miracles today. How do you know? Because we're going to see God. And in God, miracles are normal. But, 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 but science, wait, you didn't know science unto God to let you know what science was. And every once in a while you miss the mark and come find out it was in the Bible the whole time. Don't you come speaking to me about science. God invented it. Oh, if you don't believe me, grab a microphone, a microscope. You're going to find out those single cell creatures that we thought were so simple. We've discovered they're not as simple as we thought. But God did it. He created those things. So, I'm here to exhort you. You're here to exhort me. We're in this together. So when you see someone next to you and they're like, I'm not feeling that. Come on. Let's worship, worship with me. Come on, worship with me. Come on. Hey, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to worship for your breakthrough. I'm going to forget about me for right now. I'm just going to focus on your breakthrough. Whatever you're praying for, we're going to worship for that. We're going to worship our living God knowing that our living God, what's natural for him to us are miracles. Whew. 
I'm almost finished. I'm almost. I'm already four minutes and 19 seconds behind. Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. See, our worship is not supposed to be just when we get together. Our worship is supposed to be all the time. I'm all the time worshiping. When I'm eating, I'm worshiping God. When I'm sleeping, I'm worshiping God. Whatever I find myself that I am doing in there, God is being worshiped. Oh God, I want to be the best teacher that I can be for these students. Use me. Lord, let me be an instrument of your glory while I'm before them. I'm worshiping y'all. So whatever you find yourself doing, worship God while you're doing it. No, it don't mean you got to put your little uh, rug down on the floor and face the east and at a certain... Now, nah, that's not what I'm talking about. Whatever you are doing, you're going to do it to God's glory. I'm doing this for God's glory. That will stop you from doing a lot of nonsense. Because you can't do nonsense for God's glory. I mean, even say, trying to say it, articulate it, uh, out of your mouth, it, I'm going to vape for your glory. Can't, wait, I can't do that for God's glory. Just saying it is like, what? What? Mm, what? <laughs> and you know, and th that's not a no great sin. Let's just... So if you are doing things and you're doing it for God's glory, he's going to keep a lot of junk out of the way. A lot of stuff will just stay away. Job 121. <laughs> They're laughing because we all know it's Job. Okay? Job was the first book of the Bible. So Job is the oldest book in the Bible. Therefore, we should consider that when we're living our lives. If the oldest book in the Bible had someone lose everything. Oh, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked I will depart. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. Why do I have it, this in here? Because sometimes things are not going to work out like how you wanted it. And because you're going through things like how you did not want doesn't give you permission not to worship. Hmm. See, I can't just worship when everything is good. I have to be able to do this when everything is bad. When everything around me is falling apart. When the only glue that's keeping me together is God. I have to be able to come in and I have to be able to worship even in that mess. Because if I can worship in that mess, I can worship in any condition. In any condition. Now, the president of South Africa, Mandela, spent most of his life in prison. And he got out of prison and he became president. Now, I've been to South Africa, and I can tell you this about the South African people. They all loved Mandela, white and black. They loved Mandela. But you would think, how can he become this president when he spent most of his time in prison? The reality is he was in prison but prison wasn't in him. You can go through things in life, but don't allow those things that you're going through and set the glory of God in you. Allow yourself to be able to worship through it. Amen. Amen. My mom was given three months to live. Three months. She lived for another three years. And they allowed her to go home because she... She, they said, you're going to die any moment, and I want you to, to be at home with your family. So she came to church. And she had all these tubes. They were in her chest. 
she kind of just taped the tubes down. And she went to church. And she praised God. Hoping that that was going to be her last day on earth. Because she praised God with everything in her. I had never seen such a wild woman praise God before. And I was just 12 years old. So I didn't understand that she thought to herself. If I must die, I will die worshiping my God. And people will come to visit my mom to encourage her. And they'll walk out of there in tears. Not because my mom was going through. But because my mom said these words. I am highly favored of the Lord. You're down to 80 pounds. Your eyes are sunken into your skull. You are moaning from pain in your sleep. How in the world are you highly favored? Because God says he will never give me more than I'm able to bear. And because I am bearing much. It's because he knows I love him so much that I am willing to go through it. I am blessed and highly favored. See, when I talk about worship, I understand worshiping when everything is going wrong. I've seen it. And I've also known there's no greater testimony than being able to worship God when the floor has fallen from underneath your feet. When someone can see you being vulnerable and you're still, I love God with everything. Hey, even if he should slay me, I will worship him. <laughs> Whoo, Lord God. There is a reason why we come together and do this. I want to be delivered in some stuff. I want that when people walk in here, things just come off of them. But there has to be an environment for that. I was watching this magician and this magician started, you know, acting like you know we do in church and he was quoting scriptures and people were being healed and he said oh i don't believe in any god this is how this pastor does it in texas this is how this other pastor does it in in in, in ohio this is how this pastor does it in california and i went and i studied these pastors and i study the words that they're saying and it has the same effect and I thought, God is using a rock to cry out in someone else's place. Someone that doesn't even know God. It's nothing but a bundle of minerals, but has no life. Is doing something in someone else's place. When we come together and we worship, worship is not for sissies. If you're going to sit there and talk about poor me this, poor me the other, and if I did this, and if I, if you're doing that when it's time to worship, you're being a sissy. Because worship is the time between me and my God. Don't interrupt our time together. I'm looking for intimacy with God. We're going to break it down, and then we're going to let you go. Into me see. That's how we worship. Lord God into me see. And I want to see into you. It's a time we get together. So it's not about the church. It's not about our little kids running around. It's not about the tithe. It's not about the offering. It's not about your job. It's not about your money. It's the time you have with God. And if being with God brings me to a point 
of fullness of joy. Isn't that what we want? Isn't that what people do drugs for, for fullness of joy? I got a new drug. It's called a new wine. It's not a wineskin. <laughs> it comes from God. Have you ever seen someone drunk from the Holy Spirit? I have. Oh my goodness gracious. In the morning, there's no hangover. <laughs> walk out, he could barely walk out. <laughs> when we have time to worship together, your worship should elevate my worship. My worship should elevate your worship. See, us worshiping together should be better than me worshiping by myself. So it shouldn't be the praise team trying to drag the church to the presence of God. It should be the church getting to the presence of God together. Every time we get an opportunity to worship, on next Saturday when you come in, come in looking forward to it. Start speaking to yourself. I'm going to cut loose today. Yesterday was my last day uh, for summer vacation as a teacher. And I went to Alexa. Alexa, play celebration. Playing celebration from cool in the gang. Celebrate good time. Come on. Why am I celebrating? Oh, I don't have to really tell you that. It was my last day of school. I was celebrating. I don't have to see our kids again until August. I love my kids. Don't get me wrong. I love my kids. But I need my vacation. I need to get away from my kids so I can be healthy. Because sometimes my kids can get on my nerves. <laughs> when we come back in August, which will be here in a second. Y'all know we're going to blink and it's going to be August. We're going to be here. That's why I'm getting toothpicks. Just keep the toothpicks right there. So <laughs> I won't blink. If you saw me acting a fool yesterday, none of you will blame me. If you saw me doing cartwheels in the hallway, you won't be upset with me. You look at me and you're like, oh, he is happy. It's the last day of school. Last year I did cartwheels. And, you know, and I lost control of myself, and I, I hit the wall, I mean, so hard with my head, in the middle of a cartwheel, just, pent <laughs> head. This year, I decided I'm not going to do a cartwheel, because that really hurt last year. And my co-worker said, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, oh, oh, I'm, 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 oh. <laughs> This year, I'm like, oh, I'm going to do cartwheels in the spirit. I see myself doing backflips and everything like an Olympian. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, when you land it. Ah. <laughs> no one blame me. It should be that way at church. That you understand we're celebrating something. We're coming together and celebrating that we get an opportunity to be with God. If you were to do cartwheels, I'd be like, ooh, I wish I could. I'll be right there with you trying to do a cartwheel. I've never been able to do a, a flip. I could only do a cartwheel. But in my spirit, ooh, I flip all the time, y'all. I'm an Olympian in my spirit. <laughs> Some of you who have the age to where you can still do things, do it while you can. See, when I get to heaven, you're going to see me do stuff you never saw me do. I have my kids that they're waiting for me to get old. They're waiting. They told me that when they get, I get old, one of my wife's cousins, that he, he's going to hit me back for all the times I hit him when I'm old. So I'm going to get in a wheelchair and pretend I can't walk and go to his house, and that he's going to try to hit me. But this is after doing a whole year of lifting weights again, getting up to, you know, 350 pounds, Lifting weights, and I'm going to pretend I can't walk. He's going to lift his hand. It'll be the last time he lifts his hand. <laughs> what happened? 
my God does miracles. <laughs> That's normal for my God. <laughs> so from now on, when we come and it's time to worship, don't hold back. The enemy wants you to hold back. I'm telling you, don't hold back. If you're going to be a fool, this is a good place to be a fool. Because here we understand why you're acting foolish. Here we get it. King David was called a fool by his own wife. And he said these words. And with this I'm going to end. I wish I could be an even bigger fool for God. Let's pray. Father, you deserve all the glory. You are a perfect God to imperfect people. And Father, we should give you a perfect praise. We should give you a perfect worship. But Father, you understand that the enemy comes against us so we cannot give you what you deserve. But Father, from this day on, we're going to push through to give you exactly the best that we can give you. It may not be melodious. It may not be on time. Lord God, it may not have frames. It may not have pattern. But Lord God, you work in complexity. You receive our praise that we give if we're giving it with our whole heart. Father, change our hearts right where we are. For us to understand that you made us to worship. And that when we fail to worship, we fail to do what we were made for. So right now, we repent for all the years that we didn't do what we were commanded to do. And this day, Lord God, we make a new promise that when we get together, it's going to be for good. Lord God, that we're going to exhort one another, that we're going to push one another to excellence. Lord God, that to know that you are worthy of every praise. Lord God, we thank you for being here today. And we thank you that miracles are normal to you. And Lord God, that right now anyone who is hearing, Lord God, if they're sick, that you will heal them right where they are right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, that your, you said your word does not go out and come back void. Lord God, that we can hear those testimonies of all of those that have been healed because this is your normal. We ask in the name of Jesus. Amen.